Hello and welcome to Mrs. Eccleston's Read Aloud podcast, where I like to read old stories, mostly fairy tales and folk tales, and put them in a podcast format so that we can listen to them while we're cleaning the house or cleaning our rooms or taking a walk or waiting or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Today is going to be Rumpelstiltskin by the Grimm Brothers. So, folk tales are stories that have been told for centuries and centuries, and we tell them over and over again. We change them all the time. So the Grimm Brothers didn't invent Rumpelstiltskin. They heard the folk tale from people in Germany, and they wrote it down in their way, and now it's a story written by the Grimm Brothers. But remember, folk tales are old, old stories. So the language might be a little bit different and we might not be used to the way that people talk in this story. And that's because it was written in 1812. So that was 208 years ago. So the stories that I'm going to read while I do these podcasts are going to sound funny because they're from the olden times. But I hope that you sit back relax, and enjoy this change of pace while I read Rumpelstiltskin by the Brothers Grimm. Once there was a miller who was poor, but who had a beautiful daughter. Now it happened that he had to go and speak to the king, and in order to make himself appear important, he said to him, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. The king said to the miller, That is an art which pleases me well. If your daughter is as clever as you say, bring her tomorrow to my palace, and I will try what she can do. And when the girl was brought back to him, he took her into a room, which was quite full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and a reel, and said, Now set to work, and if by tomorrow morning early you have not spun this straw into gold during the night, you must die. Thereupon himself locked up the room and left her in it alone. So there sat the poor miller's daughter, and for the life of her could not tell what to do. She had no idea how straw could be spun into gold, and she grew more and more miserable, until at last she began to weep. But all at once the door opened, and in came a little man, and said, Good evening, Mistress Miller. Why are you crying so? Alas, answered the girl, I have to spin straw into gold and I do not know how to do it. What will you give me, said the mannequin, if I do it for you? My necklace, said the girl. The little man took the necklace, seated himself in front of the wheel, and whirr, 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 three turns, and the reel was full. Then he put another on, and whirr, whirr, whirr three times round, and the second was full too. And so it went until the morning, when all the straw was spun, all the reels were full of gold. By daybreak the king was already there, and when he saw the gold he was astonished and delighted, but his heart became only more greedy. He had the miller's daughter taken into another room full of straw, which was much larger, and commanded her to spin that also in one night, if she valued her life. The girl knew not how to help herself and was crying when the door opened again and the little man appeared and said, What will you give me if I spin that straw into gold for you? The ring on my finger, answered the girl. The little man took the ring, again began to turn the wheel, and by morning had spun all the straw into glittering gold. The king rejoiced beyond measure at the sight, but still he had not enough gold, and he had the miller's daughter taken into a still larger room full of straw, and said, You must spin this too in the course of this night, but if you succeed, you shall be my wife. And he thought, Even if she be a miller's daughter, I could not find a richer wife in the whole world. When the girl was alone, the mannequin came again for the third time and said, What will you give me if I spin the straw for you this time also? I have nothing left that I could give, answered the girl. Then promise me, if you should become queen, your first child. 
Who knows whether that will ever happen, thought the miller's daughter, and not knowing how else to help herself in this strait, she promised the mannequin what he wanted, and for that he once more span the straw into gold. And when the king came in the morning and found all as he had wished, he took her in marriage, and the pretty miller's daughter became a queen. A year after, she had a beautiful child, and she never gave a thought to the mannequin. But suddenly, he came into her room and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was horror-struck and offered the mannequin all the riches of the kingdom if he would leave her the child. But the mannequin said, No, no something that is living is dearer to me than all the treasures in the world. Then the queen began to weep and cry so that the mannequin pitied her. I will give you three days' time, said he, if by that time you find out my name, then you shall keep your child. So the queen thought the whole night of all the names that she had ever heard, and she sent a messenger over the country to inquire far and wide for any other names that there might be. When the mannequin came the next day, she began with Casper, Melichor, Balthazar, and said all the names she knew, one after the other, but to every one the little man said, That is not my name. On the second day she had inquiries made in the neighborhood as to the names of the people there, and she repeated to the mannequin the most uncommon and curious. Perhaps your name is Short Ribs, or Sheepshanks, or Lace Leg. But he always answered, That is not my name. On the third day the messenger came back again and said, I have not been able to find a single new name. But as I have came to a high mountain at the end of the forest, where the fox and the hare bid each other good night, there I saw a little house, and before the house a fire was burning, and round about the fire quite a ridiculous little man was jumping. He hopped upon one leg and shouted, Today I bake, tomorrow brew, the next I'll have the young queen's child. Ha! Glad I am that no one knew that Rumpelstiltskin I am styled. You may think how glad the queen was when she heard the name. And when soon afterwards the little man came in and asked, Now, Mistress Queen, what is my name? At first she said, Is your name Conrad? No. Is your name Henry? No. Perhaps your name is Rumpelstiltskin? The the devil has told you that! The devil has told you that! cried the little man, and in his anger he plunged his right foot so deep into the earth that his whole leg went in, and then in rage he pulled at his left leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself in two. The end. That was the Grimm Brothers fairy tale, Rumpelstiltskin.